sir, I'm starting the session, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the Asia Safe AOSR ISRRT webinar. I request Dr. Noriki Tomiyama, sir, to kindly begin the session. Over to you, sir. Hi. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. I'm Noriki Tomiyama from Osaka University in Japan. I am now AOSR president. Uh, thank you so much for participating the AOSR we uh, webinar today. AOSR is providing several webinars per year. Uh, today's webinar is about Asia Safe in collaboration with the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologists, ISRRT. The theme of the webinar is teamwork and collaboration is essential for radiological, uh, radiological safety in diagnosis and therapy. Uh, I think we, uh, we, we've already known that this is so important, but we don't know well about this in detail. Yeah, let's run together. Uh, today's promo uh, moderator is Professor NG. Uh, please proceed, uh, Professor NG. Thank you very much, uh, President, uh, Professor Tomiyama. Uh, my name is uh, Kwan Hong Ng. I'm the chair of the Asia Safe. Uh, before we begin, uh, just to remind you, uh, we have the two speakers. After that, please post a question in the chat box and we have a panel discussion. And also please fill in the feedback form. Uh, the QR code will be fresh at the end of this webinar and there also will be a link in the chat box uh, later. Okay? We do that uh, after that. So let's get on to our webinar for today. We have two speakers, uh, Dr. Napapong Pongnapang and Associate Professor Sanjay Jaganadan. Uh, Dr. Napapong Pongnapang, he's an assistant professor at the Department of Radiological Technology, Mahido University in Bangkok, Thailand. He is currently the president of the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologies the ISRRT. Uh, he has a bachelor degree in radiological technology from Mahedo University, a PhD in medical physics from the University of Texas Health Sciences Center, San Antonio, uh, United States. So he's unique. He holds dual qualifications uh, in Thailand uh, as a licensed radiological technologist and a licensed medical physicist, a very uh, valuable asset uh, to our community. The next speaker will be Dr. Sanjay. He is the president of the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists. And he is a MBACHB, uh, MMAT, and uh, FINZCR. These are the professional qualification and also a post fellowship training in breast MRI. Associate Prof. Sanjay Jaganathan is the consultant radiologist uh, at Perth Radiological Clinic, as well as the Fiona Stanley Hospital in Perth, uh, Australia, as a post fellowship. So, uh, with that introduction, let us begin with uh, Dr. Napapong first uh, to present his uh, talk. Remember, the team will be collaboration and teamwork. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Ng, for your kind introduction. And, and thanks to the HSF AOSR for giving us this opportunity for the radiographers to present um, our uh, role in terms of uh, radiation safety as a team approach. When uh, HSF approached me to think about a topic uh, about the collaboration between the radiographers and the radiologists. What comes in my mind is about the role of team approach because when we work together, we work as the team of profession in radiology, including radiologists, radiographers, and of course, also medical physicists. 
Um, let me talk a bit about my organization. The ISRT was founded in 1952 and now represent more than 500,000 radiographers and radiological technologists globally. We just uh, finally, we came up to the standardized term to call us. Uh, basically, we call radiographers or radiological technologists. It, it depends on British English or American English. So uh, we have the mission statement to improve the standards of delivery and practice of medical imaging and radiation therapy throughout the world by acting as international liaison organization for medical radiation technology and by promoting quality patient care, education, and research in radiation medicine science. And here are my board members. We work closely with a World Health Organization as the official, uh, with uh, as the NGO with official relationship with the WHO, along with the our radiologist counterpart, the International Society of Radiology, the ISR and IAEA, of course, the European Federation of Radiological Societies, the International Commission for Radi Radiological Protection, ICRP, and the ISR, which assigned, uh, renew our MOU with the ISR. And I, I know that AOS is part of the ISR. Well, this is from Professor Ng, a modern medicine is image centric. So basically uh, di different other uh, disciplines in medicine, they come to us, they send the patients to us for investigate what's going on. And here comes the, uh, this is the latest uh, data from Unscare report. Uh, we have, uh, to 2020 plus uh, slash 2021 re uh, assessment report. I just attended this meeting a couple of weeks ago. Well, interestingly, we found that compared with the data 10 years ago from previous unscare uh, report, the collective effective dose does not really increase because uh, during the, the last 10 year collective effective dose uh, was uh, 4,210 uh, per thousand man severed, but uh, the, that 10 years after it becomes 4,150, 4, but examination in terms of million, we, we have increased significantly. What it means is the different modalities that we use now, the dose is lower, but it doesn't mean that we, can neglect the importance of patient safety in terms of radiation safety. And here are multi-professional work that we work together from uh, professional society, the ISR, ISRT, uh, regional society, the ESR, AOSR, and also the um, professional group that work on the radiation safety for patients image gently for the pediatric and image wisely for general patient. Quality and safety in radiological practice. Uh, we talk about best, best practice, clinical guidelines, quality assurance, standards, audits, and outcome assessment. Here, when we look at these words, we have to think about who will get involved. Of course, this is not going to be a single profession. This is going to be a teamwork among our profession. So a team effort in clinical setting Radiologists as a team, the lead of the effort because radiologists need clinical information so that uh, radiologists can provide diagnostic information to the referral physician. Radiologists will come up with what kind of image quality that they need. And also they have the um, uh, important role, very important role in terms of protocol design to come up with a protocol that give uh, the referral physician um, the answer to the clinical question. And here comes the medical physicists also have important role because physicists involve mainly in uh, patient dosimetry and also parameter affecting image quality and dose. And in many places, uh, physicists take care of protocol management, but in Asia region, mainly this is the job of the radiographers of te or technologists. For us, technologists or radiographers, we are a key player because at the end, patients come into our hand. We make the decision, can it be done or not in terms of the investigation? We involve with the practical concern. We involve with the patient instruction. This is very important because communication between patient and the radiographer will benefit in terms of collaboration. And then it can reduce the repeat of the exam. And the workflow management is main responsibility of the technologists or radiographers too. I, I, I borrowed this from Dr. Lawrence Love. Um, here are the 
uh, figure show, uh, the, the image show the multidisciplinary effort for quality and patient dose reduction. When you look at the patient journey from booking, registration, preparation, examination, report, transcription, validation, and delivery, you can see that we have a series of quality assurance and early reduction from the booking process registration. But who is here? Well, we need to change the fault of the image, a cartoon here to look nice. So this is the gatekeeper, a person who do justification. Justification is gatekeeper because only justified exam can be done. And then we can go further for the optimization process. So radiologist is here, very important person, but a lot of time radiographers will step in because we are a person who see the patient. So radiographer, we, we will we'll have the role together with the radiologist for justification before we go further for optimization. So in terms of radiographers or technologist perspective, we do have role in optimization and justification, and we have role in quality. And we do these through the teamwork with the radiologist and the medical physicist. What should we know as radiographers? We should know radiation, those descriptor, the meaning and limitation, technical setting and the effect on image quality and dose and setting that radiologists need. So when it comes to the examination that we have to work together like CT scan, Radiologists and radiographer will plan together what kind of protocol we need in terms of uh, the protocol that can give the answer to the clinical uh, information that we need to give back to the referrers. And then we will look at image quality and then number of phases and organ coverage because that will help re reduce the dose to the patient because we, do, the do, we don't really need to do three or four phases scan in all the clinical indications. And also in different phases, we don't have to cover the area at the same, at the same way. And there are numbers of essentials where we can do to help improve standard of patient care in radiation medicine. So we cooperate with radiologists and physicists in optimization process after justification. And we do with the radiologists in terms of clinical protocol. And we do with physicists in terms of getting information from them in terms of dose, patient dose and parameter settings. And we utilize information from other to optimize the technical setting because at the end, radiographers will perform the examination. So question has been asked for the past 10 years, do radiographers have role in justification? By the WHO, and we have been participating this for a long, long time, we do have role and we help the IAEA, ICRP and WHO and other organization to review document like basic safety standard, WHO standard, and we, we review teaching and training materials. And we also involve in hosting workshops and seminar. This bond call for action is, is kind of concluded because this is a 10 year project. You will see that a lot of the activities that we, we, we try to implement the 10 actions to help the, the patients to, to, to be safe from radiation. The ISRT has the bond call for action um, strategies to, to respond to this uh, 12 actions since 2015 board that we developed this bond call for action as the role of radiographers. And we have numbers of follow-up for bond call for action. And this was the last one that we did. And in, on January 25th, uh, 2021, we kind of, summarize what we have done together with other sisters organization like IOMP, WHO, ISR. Um, justification, of course, there are key main things because we need to have awareness, appropriateness and audit. And when it comes to this, this needs multi-professional approach. We participate in the project launch since 2012, along with other um, radiological profession, radiologists and medical physicists. And uh, we also implement this justification into our education and training, especially in Europe. They are very active in this and they have numbers of project that has been run and implement into our practice. And now it's spreading across the world. But again, justification is not radiographers alone to do that. We need collaboration from the radiologists because radiologists will be a person who, who has ultimate responsibility.
I SRT developed the uh, justification uh, guideline or justification flowchart for radiographers that this flowchart has been adopted by our 94 uh, member society. So we, we have the flowchart and we integrate it in, into our education and training. For example, we check a medical record or duplicate or not, does it benefit our the risk and things like that. But radiologists will come into the scene where the decision making needs to be done, especially the, the major, major ones. And on top of that, um, once we have uh, integrated the justification optimization, the World Health Organization also come up with the ethical aspect of radiation protection because radiation protection, we, there, there is an aspect of ethics on it and we participated uh, in on this uh, global uh, project with the, the World Health Organization. When it comes to the optimization part, we know that only justify examination can be carried out. The basic safety standard requires optimization of protection and safety for each and every medical exposure. This is the team approach. With radiologists, good protocol is, is required. So we evaluate and improve clinical performance like we have advocate appropriate equipment use and compliance protocol. Uh, we need to provide training on downsize protocol for children, single phase limit to indicated areas. And we implement QA program and corrective actions like audit or we, we review of diagnostic reference level, diagnostic data and image quality. And of course, this, we need collaboration with our uh, radiologists who work together with us in these examination. And of course, elimination of inappropriate referral for CT will help a lot, especially this high dose modality. When we talk about clinical audit, this is uh, becoming a big trend among radiological community. Uh, the IAEA has launched the uh, Quadro program uh, years ago, and we have representatives from different groups. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Vijay from Malaysia represent the radiologists. I represent the radiographers, and uh, Don McLean from Australia, he represents the physicists. And we have other two or three guys uh, working on this group. For clinical audit, and one of the key elements with this framework, quality is comprehensive and critical review by your peer. And this audit process is synonymous with independent external evaluation, assessment, or peer review. Why I raise this? Quality comes with the main work or main task from different um, profession who works with the patient. And in terms of radiology, of course, radiologists, radiographers, we work together and physicists will come along. And this clinical audit is required by the International Basic Safety Standard. What we are looking at, we want to improve quality of patient care, promote the use of resources, enhance provision and organization of clinical services and to further professional education and training. So what do we need in terms of audit team? It's a teamwork again from radiologists, diagnostic physicists and radiographer to go to help our peer to audit their work in terms of quality and safety for our patient and, and quality of the service. And I will show you a bit with the constraint of time we have as ISRT, we have a lot of activity and effort to strain, strengthen a safety culture. Uh, a lot of project has been uh, allocated with, with the budget from our organization, especially in Africa, we run series of workshop there through our national, uh, national and regional uh, counterpart. And also in Asia, we have run quite a bit of uh, projects too. Every year we will allocate the, the, the budget to run these uh, kind of workshop worldwide. And during our World Congress, which is run every other year, we would have the radiation safety uh, pre-Congress. And 2016, we had uh, in Seoul, we talked about the uh, safety culture. And then 2000 and later with COVID, we have to stop until last year in Bangkok, we had uh, in, co in collaboration with the World Health Organization and the IAEA, we ran a pre-Congress workshop on the importance of ethics in radi radiological protection, a practical perspective for medical imaging. And this has been very fruitful pre-Congress workshop that we did.
We also assigned the um, the grant from Chesney uh, Foundation that belongs to our organization to fund the research. And this research will come around uh, the um, areas of quality and safety. And the last one was Chesney uh, ISRT Research Fund Award was, uh, was awarded to Bernard Arnold Botway from Ghana and his research title is Development of Indication-Based Diagnostic Reference Level for CT Examination in Ghana. And this uh, last year, we also uh, offer research grant in, uh, with the theme of safety culture in action enhancing access to safe and appropriate imaging devices in practice. And of course, 2023, we will have another one. So in summary for me, quality and safety in radiological services need to be delivered by a multidisciplinary uh, profession. And radiation protection in medical exposure includes justification and optimization. And justification optimization are the must for radi diagnostic radiology and this needs multidisciplinary collaborative work, especially between radiologists and the radiographer or technologist. And those optimization is needed to reduce stochastic risk of radiation. And radiologists, radiographers play very, very important role in quality and safety as a team approach. We work together for the benefit of the patient. This is for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Napapong. Uh, it's an excellent talk about, uh, at least we understand the ISRRT and the important collaborative role of the radiographers or the radiological technologies uh, in the whole service of uh, radiology. Okay, now uh, next I'd like to uh, invite uh, Sanjay Jagannathan. Uh, so uh, let's pay attention to Prof. Sanjay. Okay, over to you. Um, I think my doctor should be able to up, uh, play the video. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, Rika, could you be able to play the recorded video? Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me today to present at the AOSR ISRRT webinar 2023. I'm Sanjay Jagannathan, President of the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists. RANSCA, as we call ourselves, is a binational college covering Australia and New Zealand. We train both radiologists and radiation oncologists. I will focus on radiology today. To set the scene, Australia has a population of 27 million and a land mass of 7.6 square kilo, uh, 7.6 million square kilometers, and it has a workforce of 2,500 practicing radiologists. New Zealand has a population of 5.1 million and a land mass of 268,000 square kilometers and has 500 radiologists. Australia has a national government focused on national issues and each of the eight states and territories in Australia have their own state governments which focus on local issues. New Zealand has one central government. Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency called APANSA is the Australian government's primary authority on radiation protection and nuclear safety, whose role is to protect the Australian people and the environment from harmful effects of radiation. APANSA publishes the Code for Radiation Protection in medical exposure. This document follows many of the requirements of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, radiation protection and safety of radiation sources 
international basic safety standards, general safety requirements, part three. Australian state governments implement the regulations based on the national code. In some states, this is done via the Department of Health, and in other states, it is done via the Department of Environmental Protection. In New Zealand, radiation safety is regulated by the Ministry of Health, Office of Radiation Safety. In both countries, radiation use licenses are required for practitioners who use radiation. The two national agencies work collaboratively. RANSCA is the primary organization in Australia and New Zealand for setting standards of practice for radiology. Our standards set out the minimum standards for best practice to support and ensure the delivery of safe, high quality diagnostic imaging and interventional radiology services. Our standards refer to the national regulators, radiation protection requirements issued by APANSA and New Zealand Ministry of Health Radiation Protection Office. RANSCA has a range of guidelines to support radiology departments and practices implementing quality control programs. Some of these include general X-ray quality assurance and quality control guidelines, guidelines for quality control testing for digital mammography and CT image review self audit guideline. The main objective of a diagnostic reference level is to help avoid excess radiation dose to patients for a specified imaging task. So far, DRLs have been published for multi-detector CT, general nuclear medicine and PET, CT conducted as part of SPECT CT or PET CT procedures, and diagnostic coronary angiography. As low as possible achievable, that is the ALARA, is the guiding principle for radiation safety. The Australian National Radiation Dose Register is a database designed to store and maintain radiation dose records for occupationally exposed workers. New Zealand regulator also recommends a personal doximetry service. This is an example from APANSA of a current DRL for multi-detector CT scan on adult patients, which was last updated in March 2021. There are DRLs for pediatric and adult patients. RANSCA, in partnership with the National Association of Testing Authorities, that is the NATA, accredits radiology practices against the RANSCA standards via the Medical Imaging Accreditation Scheme. We consider this the gold standard for accreditation. It is a voluntary program. To access federal funding in Australia for imaging practices, they must be accredited by either the RANSCA NATA accreditation or the national government's accreditation scheme called Diagnostic Imaging Accreditation Scheme, the DIAS. Most practices choose DIAS scheme as it is a simpler program with only basic standards an accreditation pro process is a desktop audit only. 
In New Zealand, there is a practice accreditation program run by International Accreditation New Zealand, which is required to access some forms of government funding. RANSCA runs mammography quality assurance control program in Australia and New Zealand based on the standards and quality control processes set out in the guidelines of quality control testing for digital mammography. MRI safety is an important topic. Superior performance of the machine is ensured through the use of superconducting magnets. Radiographers are trained to monitor risks to patients from the main magnetic field, including symptoms such as dizziness, vertigo, nystagmus, nausea, flashes of light in the eyes, etc. Radio frequency pulses can produce burns to the patient and warm the body tissues from inside to outside. Radiographers ensure the avoidance of forming a conductive loop of skin to skin via the hands clasped together or hands touching the sides of the body or ankles crossed or inner thighs touching each other. Radiographers are trained to look out for metallic objects in the clothing and electrically conductive medication patches, particularly in emergency patients. The specific absorption rate that is called SAR is the amount of radio, radio frequency energy absorbed per second per kilogram, and it is measured in watts per kilogram. Staff, that's the radiographers, monitor and record patients' weight and height are uh, entered accurately to restrict the core body warming to less than one degree Celsius. In normal mode, two watts per kilogram, and it rises to four watts per kilogram with a maximum head SAR permitted to be 3.2 watts per kilogram. Although special software interlocks are installed to prevent SAR limits from being exceeded. With gradient magnetic fields, electrical currents can be induced in peripheral nerves and cardiac muscle, producing pain, involuntary muscle contractions, and cardiac magnetode stimulation, or it can induce malfunction of implanted electrical devices such as pacemakers. Acoustic noise from the magnet can reach 130 decibels, so patients need to wear hearing protection to avoid damage. The cryogenic hazard comes from the liquid helium used to quench the magnet at two, minus 269 degrees Celsius, which can form puddles of liquid air at the risk of frostbite to patients. All these, the MRI technicians, the radiographers, should be proficient and well aware. As patient is unable to move, once in the magnet, radiographers should ensure the patient has no foreign body in their mouth. There are other obvious risks such as crush or pinch injuries when moving patients into the magnet, the core, and the patient falling off the table as well. The MRI safety team in each practice ensures patient safety. The team includes an MRI safety officer, who is usually an MRI radiographer, an MRI medical director, who is a radiologist, and MRI safety expert is a technical officer or manager. There are also four specified safety zones in an MRI center 
with restricted access via locked doors for public staff and patient safety. The general safety principles of MRI include safety questionnaire to be completed for every patient, nurse or radiographer entering the scan room. There is an example of the questions on the next slide with such questions as whether the patient has any artificial body parts or metallic foreign bodies and other health related questions such as pregnancy or recent surgery or whether the patient suffers from prostrophobia. The radiographers must establish the safety of all implanted devices at each magnetic field strength. Just because a device such as a pacemaker in a patient was scanned safely elsewhere does not mean it is safe to scan. For more information on this, you can visit www.mrisafety.com. Here is an example of the types of questions to be included in a safety questionnaire. There is an incre increased uptake of CT as a choice for patients and clinicians throughout Australia due to reduce radiation dose and increasing image quality. And this is increased through improvements in detectors and filtering. There have also been improvements in dose management over the last five years via the use of iterative and deep learning imagery construction, which benefits patients with up to 70% reduction in radiation dose. Also, the use of contrast optimization hardware and software has increased CT safety. At Franska, we are currently updating our ID-Native Contrast Media Guideline and Point of Care Tools and our commitment to contrast media safety is also reflected in our updated CPD requirements around anaphylactic reaction to contrast. As a result of a recent coronial investigation into the death of a patient in the state of Victoria here in Australia, due to an anaphylactic reaction to contrast, there were a number of recommendations that Ranska responded to. The college accepted the recommendations from the coroner regarding anaphylaxis training for clinical radiologists as an outcome of the investigation. The recommendation from the coroner is as follows. The Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists implement a mandatory training requirement that radiologists working in settings where contrast is administered without other medical expert support undertake specific training in the recognition and management of severe contrast reactions and anaphylaxis every three years. As a result of this coronial investigation, it was determined that anaphylaxis training is to be undertaken once every three years and recorded in the college CPD program. The college will not mandate a specific course or module to its members, and the members will be able to use the courses they already undertake and include anaphylaxis training. And this would be part of the basic life skills and CPR training, which each radiologist is expected to do every year. In summary, both Australia and New Zealand have very stringent radiological safety protocols in place with national and local regulatory requirements, making this compulsory in order to maintain patient safety. Radiographers and radiologists work as a team and ensure patient safety is the first and foremost priority in a medical imaging center. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Sanjay, uh, for the excellent talk, uh, particularly about the radiation safety situation in Australia and New Zealand, and also the MR safety aspect, uh, which is good. Uh, okay, so now we have listened to both the speakers, and remember the, the theme is about collaboration, uh, between the radiographers, the radiological technologists, and radiologists, and the teamwork. So please do send in your questions, your viewpoint through the chat, and we will spend some time to discuss this. Uh, okay, maybe I'll start off first, right? And obviously, you know, we have two different scenario, one in Thailand, a very Asian country, the other one, Australia, New Zealand, more westernized. So just find out, just compare and contrast the working relationship between the radiographers and radiologists. Uh, can you give some examples, how close they work, how do they solve clinical problems together? Maybe I ask Dr. Napapong to begin first. Yes, um, actually I've, I've been serving as the, the president of the Radiological Technologies Board of Thailand for, for four years. I just stepped down and I, we really have the close collaboration with our Royal College of Radiologists. We work together uh, in terms of policy making and also uh, the education and, and training and professional practice. So for example, in, in the hospital, likely if we work in the, uh, the big setting like university hospital, the uh, collaboration work uh, between radiographers and radiologists are uh, pretty much well established. Like for example, to develop CT scan protocol, how to work together, and also the issues around the patient safety but we also have in the areas where we still have a uh, lack of human resources, especially in Thailand is a unique situation that we don't have enough radiographers practicing in the country. There are uh, close to 200 hospitals uh, with x-ray machine without radiographers. We are in serious shortage. And, and this is very um, pretty much a challenge to us. And one area that we collaborate well with the radiologists in my country is the initiation of training for sonographer. Sonographer has been something very new to, to, to my country because normally uh, the uh, radiologists are a, a person who perform the exam and do report. And with the collaboration with the Royal College of Radiologists, we managed to set up the training for sonographer in, in Thailand by the, uh, the uh, help from the Royal College to, to help training us. And we can we manage to to distribute the sonographer to reach out to to places in need like like in community hospital and that's going to be the plan that that we we do and this is the example of of the work that we do together. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, How about the scenario in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Prof Sanjay? Thank you very much. Uh, it is very similar in the sense that we work as a team, as you have alluded to before. It's always a team effort. Uh, and uh, it's the radiologists, the radiographers, and also the medical imaging nurses who play an important role. But um, so, uh, and in Australia, most hospitals and private practices, the radiology clinics, which serve as the community um, you know, general practitioner referrals are heavily protocol driven. So there are protocols in place and radiographers are the gatekeepers who really monitor the protocols, make sure that everything is followed to the letter. And as uh, Dr. Napapong initially indicated in his uh, excellent talk, it is all about, they are the ones who really see the patient. So they are the ones who are the first point of contact and most, most often they are the ones who are the last point of contact because after the scan is done, the patient leaves. So they are, it's very important role they play in assessing the patient's clinical condition and conveying it to the radiologist if there are any concerns. We have in Australia in particular, 
We have lately had a few challenges where uh, the, the Medical Radiation Practitioners Board, which um, registers the radiographers in Australia has, and radiographer training is done in universities here in Australia. So you undergo a four-year radi radiographer training. Usually it's a four-year program. Some differ with an undergraduate degree and then a postgraduate degree, uh, which can be up to five years. But uh, so the radiographers who train, their basic training, they finish and get into the employment. They have developed a kind of an extended scope of practice where the radiographer who qualifies should be able to um, interpret images, convey findings direct to the clinicians, and change protocols, substitute tests. All this has been built in which our colleges has objected to it because it all works in a team. You know, locally, we always extend the scope of practice for radiographers who are really experienced ones and all that. But someone who is just qualifying out of training would not necessarily have all those skills. So we are still in dialogue with the registering authority, but we'll see where it goes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof. Sanjay. Uh, since the president, uh, Prof. Tomiyama is here, would you like to share with us the situation in Japan? Uh, how is it like? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, in Japan, um, uh, due to the lack of uh, lack of the cost of radiologist, now and also we have to think about a uh, work and uh, life balance. Uh, some of the uh, works which have been done by radiologists uh, uh, um, will be uh, moved to uh, uh, technologies. So now we are trying to. Uh, move some kind, uh, some part of my work to uh, radiologists. For example, uh, um, injection uh, injection of uh, iodine uh, contrast media. Uh, not now. Uh, that now, um, uh, um, uh, the technologists can uh, do that. Do such kind of uh, procedures. Yeah, and also now we are planning to ask uh, technologists. Uh, to lead, um, uh, to 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 like uh, some kind of uh, reports of CT or MRI, yeah. So now we are so we should um collaborate more. So yeah. So uh, Mr. Abafo, I have a question. Uh, do you have any uh, good ideas or tips? Uh, um. How how can we, uh, radiologists and technologists, uh, collaborate better? Collaborate uh, better, communicate better. Yeah. yeah, I think this is the key because uh, when, when it comes to the patient care, we work as a team. I think professional organization plays important role, like the radiological, radiological society in each country and the society of radiological technologists or society of radiographers in each country. Um, play important role. So most of, the, most of the time that I, I see, we collaborate. When the government asks us to do something, we collaborate. Like for example, the guideline for MRI safety in my country, we work together with the radiologists and, and also in other issues too. And, and interestingly that in Japan, I, I have been involved with the, 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 the technologists in Japan and I learned from them that, oh, now they can do the contrast injection, which we cannot do and also can and they can do like the, the red dot system to to spot the pathology in in the the images which we have not done yet so it's kind of it's not uh i don't think this is something that we invade the territory of professional uh, practice but this is going to be um mutual agreement that we work together to improve the patient care based on the expertise from from each of the profession. And again, a practice of radiographers or technologists from one place to another are different uh, pretty much. So it, it depends on the, 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 the local context in each country, but definitely um, collaboration between professional society or professional association will, will start this, this collaboration dialogue between the, the two professions. Mm, okay, thank you. And I have uh, one question to Sanjay, okay? Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, as for uh, radiation dose, 
Yeah, you are now uh, collecting uh, 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 national dose um, uh, uh, restoration uh, data. So, uh, do you our do um, uh, national university or uh, university or government uh, has a plan to you to use these data? So what happens is each practice um, is the APANSA is the federal government radiation protection agency, mm -hmm. and we do provide data to the to that agency on the scanners, what kind of doses we are doing on patients. We need to do that. Mm -hmm. But we have not gone to the level of the American system where patients can carry their own radiation measurement. Uh, you know, in America, in certain states, they do that, where the patient will have some kind of a dosimetry, dosimeter to show how much they are accumulating radiation dose. We, we don't do that. But scanners should be... Um, you know, and also they can randomly audit scanners to see how well they are within the limitations of, of uh, radiation, uh, you know, levels. But having said that, uh, uh, Professor Tomiyama, I must say that most modern scanners are highly advanced in terms of calibrating radiation doses, you know, so they are very safe. And now mm -hmm. you add the photon counting seat. Mm -hmm. which really has the most mini minimum, you know, compared to a photon counting CT is much better than doing an X-ray. The radiation mm -hmm. doses are so low. Yeah, of course, yeah. it's expensive, millions of dollars, but hopefully in another few years, the price will come down. Mm, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. I think all uh, CTs will be replaced by photon count CT in the future. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Professor Tomiyama raised a point about the Japanese situation where the radiologists are getting older and older. It's really a great shortage right, of radiologists as well as other medical professionals. Now, the one question that came uh, is related to that is the AI, the artificial intelligence. So the participant asked if the, would the AI help uh, in the workflow of radiology, and would it also help to enhance the radiation safety? So could I ask uh, Dr. Mapung to respond to this question? Uh, well, a AI has been around for, for <laughs> a long time, not, not only for the radiologists, but I will speak on the radiographer's part. AI comes to payroll in, in terms of image reconstruction like deep learning image reconstruction that significantly reduced the dose. And also not only the image reconstruction, but also the, the patient uh, pathway, especially patient positioning, protocoling, when technologists or radiographers, we, we perform the examination. Like now in, in CT and MRI, they have AI comes to play a role in terms of auto positioning, like in CT, you know that if, if you cannot position the patient right at the center of the couch and the couch is not right at the center of the gantry, then the dose, the ATCM, the automatic uh, tube modulation cannot work properly, then the dose will be increased with the image noise, things like that. AI comes to pay the role. And also the, the protocoling, like to scan, the AI will, will help with the uh, selection of the scan plane and also the, the technical setting that fits with the patient, things like that. So AI comes to help us, but at the end, uh, on the uh, technologist perspective, we, we still need the qualified uh, radiological, radiological technologists who, who are trained in, in the use of AI. And our education and training has has been adapted into this technology and, and many institute now has, has the course uh, content that involve the AI in our practice, not only in the physics of imaging and re image reconstruction part, but also uh, with the, the practical part of the, the technology. So humans still, still, still need to be there. And especially for radiographer technologists, we are the, the bridge between the technology and the patient because we need to do patient interaction. So this is uh, that this is how we can keep the, the significance of the, the profession there. Yeah. Also the gate 
ways, isn't it? As Prof Sanjay mentioned. <laughs> so, so Prof Sanjay, your take on this? I I think AI is very promising. the The big question with AI is that is it going to run um, on its own, doing crazy things with no control, which everyone fears. I think that's where the health professionals should be the gatekeepers, because uh, at least um, in Australia and in, in the US and other places, all these software tools are being installed, not on the machine side of things like what we are discussing, but on the side of image interpretation. And what I see a future evolving where the, it's like, you know, a good example is nowadays, no one knows to read a map because GPS systems are so sophisticated. <laughs> so the same is going to happen to radiologists who are training. They wouldn't be able to pick up abnormalities because already the AI tools are going to be doing it. And then you rely too much on their interpretation. You're going to miss things which will cause patient lives and problems. And that's where I think we should be vigilant how to protect that. Yeah, uh, you might to continue. One question just came in to ask about how safe of AI to the patients. Uh, you want to add on to that, uh, Prof. Sanjay? Uh, this, is, uh, this is a very important question because I was at ECR recently and I was talking to ACR and RSNA and ESR. One of the problems we have is that um, how do you say at present all the software gets installed? Who is going to monitor? You know, like for most scanners, there is compliance testing, there is proper servicing done by physicists and, uh, you know, technology, uh, the, the manufacturers at routine periods. Now, who is going to do that in terms of post deployment testing of these AI tools, whether they are functioning the way they should? We don't have answers for that. Mm, and that's good. a huge concern. Yeah, no, unknown to us. How about Dr. Pung, your last well, thing on this? <laughs> I think we, we need to learn about AI. Uh, at the end, humans should be a person who control the AI when it comes to the, the patient care, because we know what is best for our patient and don't let, let AI take over this part. For example, even in the AI is very smart in terms of patient positioning, the technologists still need to, to authorize the scan. Not like we just let the AI do everything by the camera and control detection. Technologists will go and see if it's the position is really right. Otherwise, like you have a machine, you have to make sure that the, 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 the machine does the right job or, or do things correctly. So human process still need to be there. And as I said, patient communication should be done by human to human. So this is another thing that is very important yeah. too. I think all this, your points, uh, the two of you emphasize the importance of collaboration or the more right, of the radiographers and radiologists. I'd like to invite Professor Tomiyama uh, to say a few words and also to uh, thank the speakers and the participants for this uh, successful webinar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, everyone who attended this webinar here. So, uh, and also thank you for moderating at the session, uh, Professor Energy. Yeah, uh, the, the webinar, I think th this webinar is very, uh, is very fruitful. Yeah, there was a lot of discussions and uh, we got, uh, uh, we got a lot of information yeah, from this webinar. Yeah, so I'll see you uh, at the next webinar. Yeah, thank you yes. so much. Thank you. Okay, before you go, uh, we like to invite uh, to fill in the feedback form. Uh, let's display the uh, QR code here. Rika, could you display? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll send you the link at the chat box as well. Uh, thank you for the participation. Uh, yeah, this is the QR code. You can uh, take a snapshot and then you give us your feedback. And by the way, uh, this 
webinar will be made available the AOSR YouTube uh, later on. Okay. I'd like to uh, announce the next webinar, the third one. That, that is the on the 10th of April. And we uh, haven't forgotten our radiation oncologists or clinical oncologists or radiotherapists, right? So the, the next uh, Asia Safe AOSR ISRT webinar uh, will be featuring uh, the Vice President of uh, Asia and Australia ISRT, uh, Ms. Tan or uh, Jake Wei, and also uh, oncologist uh, from uh, Indonesia, the acting president of the Indonesian Radiation Oncology Society. So look forward to, uh, to your participation. Uh, can register and uh, hope to see you then. Okay. So once again, thank you very much on behalf of the Asia Safe AOSR and the ISRRT. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. So with your permission, can I conclude the session, sir? Yeah. Can you uh, let us, the speakers, stay on for a few minutes? Yes, sir. Sure. Offline now? Are we offline, Rekha? No, sir. Give us one minute, sir. We thank Dr. Napapong, sir, and Dr. Sanjay Jagannathan, sir, for their wonderful talk and all the delegates for being a part of this session. Special thanks to Dr. Noriki Tomiyama, sir, for this wonderful initiative and Emeritus Professor Kwan Hung NG, sir, for organizing this session. On behalf of the Doctor Project Management team, this is Rekha and Sarita signing off, wishing you all a good evening.